was in Dili just about two weeks after that and the Indonesians formed a new death squad called the Ninja and goes around at night and takes suspects away never to be seen again. In the morning, Thursday morning, my cousin came and screamed and said uh, last night the army came in and smashed all my uncle and my cousins. And then after knowing see them, they all got black nose and all broken. And when I see them, I was feeling sad, so I can't do nothing. Those acts of repression have intensified and there have been house to house searches, curfews, areas of Dili itself, the showcase of East Timor from, on the Indonesian's part has been shut off and curfew. We have to street to go, you can see them with the trucks and car and motorbike. So when we went out you can see nobody walking, nothing, just empty. They were scared. I submit that it is high time that the question of East Timor was voted off the United Nations agenda, that it ceased to preoccupy and distract the nations of Southeast Asia and the Pacific. We uh, expressed regret, and it was expressed firmly before, and I repeated that, that there hadn't been the uh, internationally supervised act of uh, self-expression of the people of the area. Now, that is in the past, past. The United States applauds Indonesia's quest for what you call national resilience. No nation in our era has shown itself more firmly committed to preserving its own independence than Indonesia. And yet no nation has pursued that goal in a more responsible manner. <laughs> Negara Ambon, negara pimpin, kita ada. Streams flowing together become rivers. Rivers increase, whatever opposes them. So must the children of Timor unite, unite against the wind blowing from the sea. The sea wind whips the Kabbalah, whips our eyes bloody, our pegs bloody, makes our tears roll down, our sweat roll down, sucks the fat of our earth, the fat of our bodies. Streams flowing together become rivers, Children of Timur United, reclaim our land. Help me, help me to just, uh, to Australia. I have say who's in a bar. How hard declaration, military haruka halo, Kadesh declaration. How how near family who to Ninara, how near line near family Ninara, how near family in the Beke, here Timur in Ninara, but my Hanela Bel Colia. Say how my Hane, how Colia Karik, Sirhenova, Belhetan Susar. Ibalu ne beke ne sam, ane sa ihel lista negra sirabel bolu bahal turtura so halo bot tut conforme sin hakara ne em halo ko ihanu iat sai, iat sai ihe iha televisam. Muitas vezes matavam mulheres, crianças, levavam sempre a cabeça até amarravam as tinhas cordas para os olhos, penduravam se o pescoço e levavam as cabeças dos mortos, né, para apresentar o comando. E depois nós andamos com eles, andamos por aí fora, eles apanhavam raparigas. As raparigas novas coisas obrigavam eles, hein? levavam com eles para as coisas, prendiam elas, disse que é fertilim, fertilim. Mor, cuidado, mesmo sai na cara e leva mais timor, lor de tis lolom. Fuan, horran, na facar e timor, la sai. Timor, a cara, continua timor.
East Timor, just 650 kilometres to the north of Australia, was colonised by the Portuguese in the late 16th century. The decolonisation of East Timor only began when the right-wing government of Portugal was overthrown in 1974. However, the move to an independent East Timor was short-lived. On the 7th of December 1975, East Timor was invaded by Indonesia. After the invasion of East Timor in 1975, the island becomes like a hell. We can't no longer live there. And the island becomes like a great prison for our people. We lose the freedom. We can't live our own way of living. Within three months of the invasion, 60,000 East Timorese were dead and by 1985, up to 200,000 people, one third of the population, had died because of war and starvation. Under its first leader, President Sukarno, Indonesia had been seen by many Asian and African countries as the champion of anti-colonialism, having ousted their Dutch colonial rulers in 1945. But since the 1965 anti-communist coup that brought President Suharto to power, Indonesia has adopted a more pro-Western and expansionist role. In 1976, Indonesia claimed East Timor as its 27th province. Yet despite the active support of the United States and Australia, the United Nations has never recognised this claim. We have helped uh, the East Timorese to be independent through integration with Indonesia because they would not be slaves to a colonial or other master. Secondly, because uh, these Fritillin elements, they are communist influenced and we cut out a growth or a certain growth of communists in our backyard. In the short period before the invasion, three main political parties emerged. Apadeti, a minority party, fully supported integration with Indonesia. UDT, the Timor Democratic Union, was a conservative and nationalist party. The party which quickly established itself as the most popular was Fretilin, the pro-independence party. Following Portuguese supervised village elections, in which Fretilin won a clear majority, UDT launched an unsuccessful coup against Fretilin on August the 11th, 1975. During the coup, the Portuguese administration withdrew from the mainland of East Timor. Fretilin then established de facto administration throughout the country. Threatened by a possible independent East Timor, the Indonesian generals stepped up their plans for an invasion. Under the code name Operation Komodo, military incursions were launched from Indonesian West Timor. There's been no attack today, but the 60-man Fretilin garrison is pulling back to Maliana. They've been told that Indonesian soldiers are heading this way up Greg the road Shackleton, from an Australian television anyway, reporter, like was one of the international journalists who went to East Timor to cover the conflict. Why, they ask, are the Indonesians invading us? Why, they ask, if the Indonesians believe that Fretilin is communist, do they not send a delegation to Dili to find out? Why, they ask, are the Australians not helping us? When the Japanese invaded, they did help us. Why, they ask, are the Portuguese not helping us? We're still a Portuguese colony. Who, they ask, will pay for the terrible damage to our homes? My main answer was that Australia would not send forces here. That's impossible. However, I said we could ask that Australia raise this fighting at the United Nations. That was possible. At that, the second in charge rose to his feet, exclaimed, Camarada journalist, shook my hand, the rest shook my hand, and we were applauded because we are Australians. That's all they want, for the United Nations to care about what is happening here. The emotion here last night was so strong that we, all three of us, felt we should be able to reach out into the warm night air and touch it. Greg Shackleton at an unnamed village which we'll remember forever in Portuguese Timor. The government has never acknowledged that they were killed. 
Uh, because if they did acknowledge that, the next question would be, what were the circumstances, who did it, how? And it would have been the easiest thing in the world for the Australian government to insist upon an inquiry, but of course they never have. The Whitlam government did not protest the murders of the newsmen. It was later reported that within 24 hours of their deaths, senior ministers in the Whitlam government were informed by one of their intelligence services that the men had been killed. Earlier, in September 1974, Whitlam had indicated to Indonesia's President Suharto his preference for the integration of East Timor into Indonesia. One month after the Balabo tragedy, Indonesian authorities handed over Greg Shackleton's passport and a small box containing unidentified charred bone fragments. Faced with the certainty of invasion, Fretilin declared the Democratic Republic of East Timor on the 28th of November 1975. Ten days later, Indonesia invaded East Timor. On that morning, an urgent appeal was broadcast by Fretilin from Dili Hospital. The appeal was heard on the Red Cross radio in Darwin. A lot of people are being killed, I repeat, indiscriminately. On Christmas Day, just 18 days after the initial invasion, 20,000 Indonesian troops launched an attack into the hills around Dili. Fretilin and the greater part of the population withdrew to the mountainous interior. Indonesia começou a avançar e nós começamos a recuar, fomos recuando até Mobisi. Mobisi já não coisa, chegamos a recuamos Mobisi mais para cima para até Flecha e quando o, o chefe, os comandantes da Fretilin resolveram uh, dividir-nos e mandar cada um para as suas terras para começar a fazer guerrilhas, porque nós, força contra força, nós não tínhamos força suficiente, mas para guerrilhas podíamos demorar muitos anos a lutar, né? Para que ela ia dar-lhe, e já vai ser a cair. Se a rala massacre, se a rala cair, 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 se a rala During this period, 1976 to 1978, Indonesia more than doubled its spending on military equipment. The major supplier was the United States. Following their defeat in South Vietnam, the US government was more than ready to support the vehement anti-communism of the Indonesian generals. The Carter administration, while professing a commitment to human rights, increased its military aid to Indonesia to $93 million. In 1978, the Indonesian military used new anti-guerrilla tactics of encirclement, starvation and annihilation in the mountainous interior where over 90% of the population lived. Yeah! 
E quando nos apanharam, eu estava no meio, eu e o camarada Guzmão, estávamos no meio com a família também, a família do camarada Lobato, no meio da, 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 de muita população. Então, ali é que foi mais massacres. Todos aqueles que levaram armas pesadas, foram todos apanhados, foram rasgados, alguns foram martirizados, pisados a ter de estar sangue. Ou as crianças, até crianças, a morrer agarrado às mães. O meu também morreu de fome comigo durante dois dias, abraçado a mim, sem eu poder fazer nada. Nicolau Labato, o presidente de Fretilin, foi killed by Indonesian troops durante this offensive. News of his death came as a great shock to all Timorese people. He had personified the struggle for independence. The Indonesian government took full advantage of Labato's death, flying his corpse to Jakarta and showing it on Indonesian television. What was not broadcast were the other consequences of the Indonesian operations in East Timor, widespread famine and starvation. These smuggled photos were shown in the international press in October 1979. An official of the American Catholic Relief Services estimated that the famine was worse than that in Biafra and as bad as that in Kampuchea. Indonesia, when Indonesia was there in Timor, there was a lot of pressure because the people didn't have to do anything, they couldn't get out of more than 50 meters of the village. And then they started to see famine, right? Nós, quer dizer, eu era condutor e eu é que levava, levava a carga, eu também levava a carga e com muitas caminhonetes eram alugadas para a CRS e para a Rede Proz para levar a comida para a montanha. Nós levávamos a comida, levávamos, chegávamos lá, mas quer dizer, tudo o que levávamos era o que não prestava. Porque tudo de bom que a Indonésia, a, que a Rede Proz dava, era vendido nas lojas e era, era para eles, para o uso, uso deles. Despite starvation and the enforced resettlement of much of the population, Fretilin, under the command of its new leader, Kerala Shanana, rebuilt its forces in 1980 and 1981. Its strength lay in a secret network which operated in the towns and concentration camps. In April 1981, the Indonesians launched Operation Security. Schools and businesses were closed down and 50,000 East Timorese men and boys were conscripted. In groups of 12, they were forced to march in front of advancing Indonesian troops. This strategy was known as the fence of legs. There might be some isolated uh, accidents or incidents or whatever you call it that this took place. But as a generality, for instance, that there are real uh, efforts as to violate human rights from the Indonesian government or from military from Indonesia or from the civil service, that is not correct. But sometimes there are what you call here in the West, police brutality, this might happen. It happens everywhere. It happens in Sydney, it happens in Melbourne, it happens in New York. But I also acknowledge that this kind of thing also happened in East Timor. But of course, it is not meant. We are not killing people just for the, for the what they call it, because we enjoy it. We are not just kind of a civilization. Às quatro da manhã, a Fritlinha atacou uma aldeia que chamava-se Dari, Dari de Ainaro. E aí feriram um sargento indonésio e andaram a tentar capturar as armas, queimaram lá a casa dos indonésios, né? o, 
comando, né? comando deles estavam a queimar aquilo. Estiveram lá eles dois dias, a fortuna estava lá e eles não, não avançaram. Entretanto, a fortuna retirou para o mato outra vez e eles foram para lá. E quando foram para lá, então, a população da área que estava ali, aqueles homens vales, aquelas coisas, prenderam aquilo tudo e levaram para Ainaro. Levaram para Ainaro, alguns foram transferidos para o Atauro, como já havia muitos, muitos prisioneiros no Atauro, quer dizer, políticos, quer dizer, como políticos levaram para o Atauro, também não tinham comer, como eles já devem saber. E muitos eram mortos em Ainaro. Estavam presos de noite e levavam raparigas, as raparigas bonitas, coisas eles provocavam, hein? usavam deles, delas e, e depois já estavam fartos delas, mas de noite levavam no carro quatro, cinco e iam matar assim, um, dois, a coisa de dois quilômetros, a caminho de, de caça, numa uma parte chamada Builico, e aí levavam aí uma ramanceira muito alta, e eles matavam a facada porque não davam tiro ali, a facada e as agalhadas, e aí depois ainda estava o corpo vivo, mandavam daquela ramanceira para baixo, hein? aquilo era uma coisa pá, que a gente, incrível, né? Eu, e depois eu, quando andava, eu andava a fazer transporte de material de construção, passava sempre ali, de vez em quando havia pessoas que iam comigo no carro, porque eu sempre levava pessoas de caça ou de atura que, um, que pediam boleia, né? Eu passava e eu disse, mas lá parei o carro, olha, a Indonésia matou aqui muitas pessoas. E depois eu parei o carro para ver também, né? Curiosidade, fui ver, estava ali um, em cima um grande lago de sangue, um grande lago de sangue, e depois lá embaixo estavam os mortos. Ei, pá, aquilo era mortos por cima um, por cima do outro, de várias posições. Aquilo foi a força. We have to pick out one by one the rebels from, from where they are. Because uh, our feelings, we don't feel good if we have to bomb whole cities or villages flat. Because innocent people were getting dead, killed or hurt or wounded or whatsoever. So we have to do it very carefully. Just take out these uh, elements who wants to be, to, to, to be their own. The failure of successive campaigns to crush the resistance forced Indonesia's General Pawanto to hold ceasefire talks with Shanana in a Fretland controlled area in March 1983. When Shanana sought to include Portugal and the United Nations in the negotiations, Indonesia's Commander in Chief, General Madani, broke the ceasefire by announcing another offensive Operation Clean Sweep. As documented by Amnesty International, this offensive was accompanied by a huge increase in the number of people who disappeared. From August to December 1983, a reported 600 people in Dili alone disappeared. Distraught relatives were told they had been sent to Bali. And we don't need anybody else's advice on looking after our human rights problems. It's a closed book. It's a closed book. You said it as a close book, yes. Kilimanjaro. <laughs> In three days, I think it's not a good thing. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. In three days, I don't know how to do it. 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 It's time for silence. For the silence time. For the lifetimes lost. The lives giving. For the homeland. For the nation, for the people, for our liberation. Soon after the Australian Labour Party regained power in 1983, Prime Minister Hawke visited the Indonesian president to foster closer ties. Later, the Hawke government became the only Western nation to give formal or de jure recognition to Indonesia's incorporation of East Timor. During the 1983 ceasefire, an Australian parliamentary delegation had gone to East Timor. The delegation was led by Bill Morrison, a federal Labour minister. The politicians were escorted by the Indonesian military throughout their visit. When the delegation of Bill Morrison went to Timor, before they arrived in Indonesia, they started to send the caminhões, the chinas, many cars, right? All the people had cars, they contracted the cars to transport the population estava com a Indonésia nas montanhas e em todos os lados para virem 
pedido para fazer, representar, né, para receberem o, essa delegação do Bill Morrison. E quando eles chegaram lá, aquilo teve 10, começaram a lançar, começaram a fazer coisas, para mostrar que o povo estava com a Indonésia, né, queriam fazer, mostrar que o povo estava com a Indonésia. E depois até disseram, se, se alguém perguntasse a falar inglês ou sabe falar português, dizer que não sabe falar, que não sabe falar só sabe falar em Indonésia. Já esqueceram o português. Quando as forças, quando as Indon... essa, essa comissão de... foi lá, eles iam ficar num hotel. Ele tinha um hotel, quer dizer, que era o hotel Resende. O hotel Resende era só para, para, os, para os indonésios, para aqueles grandes, né? porque eles não queriam coisa, para quando houvesse, houvesse assim, delegações que iam a Timor, eles tinham, quer dizer, punham lá para ninguém coisa. Entretanto, nesses hotéis, eles tinham lá criados timorenses a trabalhar. Mas nesses dias, eles tiraram, mandavam os crianças ir embora, davam off, né? E punham lá oficiais indonésios vestidos de criado, assim, coisa, que é para ver se alguém ia lá falar com eles ou qualquer coisa, para depois eles, no fim, para, iam lá buscar e liquidavam essa pessoa. E o oficial fact-finding committee da Austrália nos deixou entrar para ter uma olhada no Timor. Na verdade, eles não têm direito de fazer isso. Mas, como é um país que não é um país, e as suas intenções são boas, e nós podemos operar para eles, para que eles possam ver para eles. Near the town of Lager, the delegation was stopped by Fretilin guerrillas, who delivered an invitation to Bill Morrison. Um, the, uh, they had uh, Fretilin gear on and markings. They handed me a letter which was signed Fretilin. Um, the Fretilin authorities, uh, the uh, Indonesian authorities, said that the... Morrison did not accept the invitation, which was to meet um, nearby with a Fretilin leader, saying it was too late in the day. It was later reported that the Fretilin guerrillas were subsequently executed. In April 1985, Bill Morrison was appointed Australia's ambassador to Indonesia. From the first day of the invasion, Fretilin maintained radio contact with supporters in Darwin. Despite Australian government attempts to seize the radio, contact was maintained until December 1978, when the Indonesians captured the transceiver in East Timor. This smuggled photo shows Fretilin re-establishing the link in January 1985. On this occasion, Australian politicians, human rights representatives and the media were forced to hide in the bush outside Darwin in order to hear accounts by Fretilin of the ongoing war in East Timor. On the doorstep of Australia we've seen the massacre of in excess of 100,000 people, potentially 200,000 people. And today I've been able to observe at first hand that the voice of Fretland is still coming from East Timor. And I think it's extremely important that people understand that the struggle isn't over. Forty years before, Australian commandos fighting the Japanese had used similar means to transmit vital information to Darwin. During the Second World War, we support Australian commandos and we lost about 40,000 lives to support Australia. I myself, I lose my father and one brother. Those boys and young men, they came with us voluntarily. They wanted to be with the Australians. Bahamoric Australia soldado. Go with the Australian soldiers. They loved us. We had nothing. We were depending on them for food. Uh, we were depending on them to carry our wounded. We were depending on them for everything we did outside of fighting. We depended on the Timorese. Australia was at war. We lost 20,000 men killed, I believe, in World War II. 600,000 people lose up to 60,000 people. And who brought the trouble on them? We brought the trouble on them when we went to Timor. In the first 13 years of the occupation, no one visited East Timor unless they had been invited by the Indonesian authorities. In the face of increasing international pressure from many quarters, including the European and Japanese parliaments and the United States Congress, Indonesia announced that from January 1989, tourism in East Timor would be allowed that the country would be partially open to the outside world. I'd say, do you speak English? And if I just wanted directions, they were charming. But if I started to say, what's it like living here, they would look very frightened and look both ways and go. First of all, they called in one Timorese. 
And then they cited me, so I was called in next. They got over me pretty quickly. They just took particulars off the passport. But the Timorese, he was questioned. He had to put a, his hand behind his head like that, jump in the air and genuflect on each alternate knee. After he did it about 20 times, he thought, well, this is enough. He stopped and there was a roar. Keep going. I reckon about 200 times. But with the opening of his tear motor, people started to go into his t into it back home and starting to, to see what was like back there. Some, it takes two visits before they come back revolted because it is their own relatives telling them, go out there and speak up. Because they in Timur have decided already to, 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 to do whatever they can to go against Indonesians. But if you travel into the areas like I did through the mountains, where a lot of the Timorese people live, the area is swarming with Indonesian soldiers and the whole air, the whole atmosphere of the place is fraught with danger and insecurity. Robert Dom, an Australian lawyer, went to East Timor in September 1990. He was taken by the Timorese underground 20 kilometres into the mountains, where he met and recorded the only ever interview with the commander of the armed forces of the resistance, Kerala Shanana. The interview with Shanana lasted for about 12 hours, so we covered a large number of issues. But I suppose the most important themes to me from what he had to say were firstly the level of the resistance and in particular the situation of students and young people in East Timor today. As crianças de ontem, a quando da invasão, sofreram diretamente os horrores da guerra. Eles viram seus pais massacrados, viram suas mães maltratadas, seus familiares e amigos, muitos deles viveram nas montanhas durante os três primeiros anos, muitos outros estiveram desde, desde logo sob o controle do inimigo. Em 1958 a 1990, a situação obrigou a que os estudantes tinham de que manifestar publicamente, fazer chegar as suas aspirações à comunidade internacional, como também ao próprio povo de Timor, de que os estudantes até o momento presente rejeitam a integração da sua página no contexto da nação indonesia. Increasingly, the students and the people of East Timor have turned to the Timorese Catholic priests for physical protection as well as moral and spiritual support. The membership of the Catholic Church has risen from 40 to over 80% of the population. However, the Timorese clergy have found little support from the Vatican. In preparing for the Pope's visit to East Timor in October 1989, the Vatican envoy, Father Tucci, said that the Vatican should not sacrifice its interests for the sake of a few hundred thousand Catholics. Many innocent people have died. After each homily, they would all raise their fists and cry out, Viva! The excitement rose with each time, especially when he said, You are the salt of the earth in your great suffering. But when the Pope said that they should reconcile, there was absolute silence. And I couldn't believe it was actually happening. And I started to get those shivers up and down my back. And I realised they're united completely. Sir Loke Pambletu, I was in the restaurant of Sir Loke Pambletu. 
Siro padre si le tin dar tia dada papa tama babe sene batroka ne mais en cuanto con si papa la reona a tropa sin mes comesa ba tu cara tus serona a tu car estudiante ne pro hadau a tora pamlit sene botene ne so it wasn't until i got on a bus and was leaving that an Indonesian journalist told me that there'd been this big protest and he told me all about it. But what was even better was that when I got back to the hotel, I was told of the availability of a tape which had come from the Indonesian television station that operates in Dili and I was shown it. You saw the students run forward carrying these banners as if they were running into the cannons. You saw the plain clothes um, pious worshippers suddenly pull out truncheons and belt them and you saw chairs being picked up and young people being belted with the chairs. Today, I'm going to say, 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 Saya dapat itu bila saya tempoh kiri kiri dapat itu bila saya itu ni ya itu ni ha hatu lu itu ni akarak bau mundur liur ni itu sendiri kata dia ngan bau bau itu ni mati lahan orang. So that the moment you'd seen that, you know that nobody has exaggerated when they've talked about people being murdered, beaten, because we that there it was for our very eyes over a little thing by and I said, well what what's on the banners? Because I don't speak Tetan. And it said, Pope save East Timor, viva Fretlin, viva Shanana. Amelia Guzmau, the wife of Kerala Shanana, and their two children have been separated from him since the invasion in December 1975. Assisted by the International Red Cross in East Timor, they came to Australia in April 1990. Depois fui, a partir de 1980, fui sempre interrogada porque o meu marido já era conhecido, né? E eu sempre buscar, era sempre à noite. A partir das nove horas da noite, ia-me sempre buscar e levava sempre comigo os dois filhos. Muitas das vezes estavam doentes, tinha que levar também, sim, doentes. Ficávamos lá das nove horas, às vezes até uma hora, duas horas e até às sete da manhã. Faziam perguntas, faziam propostas, que era para eu chamar o meu marido no mato. Criam os meus filhos. E eu dizia, sempre dizia que não, né? Que não ia chamar o meu marido e que nem dava os meus filhos. E eles então insistiam sempre. Como eu não aceitava, começavam a falar assim, palavras. Palavras impróprias para uma mulher, né? E para sair de Timor para cá também foi muito difícil. Eles, eles fizeram-me sofrer até a última hora. Isso quer dizer, com interrogações? Sim, com interroga interrogações e se eu precisasse de algum documento né, para o processo da imigração, era sempre interrogada. Porque eles não queriam que eu saísse de Timor. Uhum. Queriam que eu ficasse lá para até o meu marido uhum. render. Mas, a conclusão que, conclusão que não, eu também disse que ele não havia de render. Porque ele, quando saiu do meu lado, disse logo que render nunca. Ele preferia morrer do que render. Mas ele, a resposta dele era sempre que ele estava a lutar não para a família, mas sim para todo o povo de Timor-Leste. Open your eyes, a new sun is over your village. Open your eyes, a new sun is over our land. Away! Take the reins of your own Kuda. Awake, take command of our own land. Despite beatings and arrests following their demonstration during the Pope's visit, the students prepared themselves for the visit of the United States Ambassador to Indonesia, John Monjo, in January 1990. <laughs> itu demonstra, demonst, para demonstran itu mereka uh, ada yang menunggu di airport dengan sepeda-sepeda motor dengan taktik mereka sudah yang sudah di, di 
eh, direncanakan itu salah satu satu kelompok ya terus ada kelompok lain ya di mana mereka hanya menunggu menunggu ya, di, di tidak hanya pas di depan hotel turisme tapi agak lebih jauh sedikit untuk hanya mengamati aja nah, itu kedua ada yang ada juga yang sudah di depan hotel turisme itu between 80 and 100 young people students raced into the hotel. We could hear this noise coming down the street and they tore into the hotel and occupied the balcony upstairs where Ambassador Monjo and his party were uh, and also ran into the beer garden and unfurled banners that were all written in English. Well, I took a photograph initially of the students and then the talk started with the Ambassador and the students and I took a series of photographs then. Dan tidak hanya pemuda, tidak hanya anak laki, tetapi justru di, 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 di tengah-tengah itu para demonstran yang kebanyakan laki itu banyak juga yang wanita, yang anak gadis yang di mana mereka sudah kehilangan orang tuanya yang telah di Indonesia bunuh dan segala macam itu. Itu ketidakpuasan mereka itu benar-benar ditunjukkan kepada dan para duta itu memang mereka mendengar keluhan-keluhan itu. And while the ambassador talks to them, truckloads of um, military police, riot police, turned up and surrounded the hotel. Soldiers came into the hotel and surrounded them. And then the ambassador had to leave, and the students asked him if he could grant them safe passage from the hotel. And as he was leaving, the students tried to follow him um, unsuccessfully. He drove off quite quickly. Three truckloads of riot police just moved in and started beating the students, forcing them up against uh, an iron fence that runs along the front of the Turismo. Um, so we saw probably 40 or 50 students um, get the hell beaten out of them with rifle butts, with batons. The, uh, the riot police essentially rioted. The students were unarmed, had uh, indulged in no aggressive behaviour whatsoever. <laughs> memegang eh, apa kepala mereka dan mem, eh, memukul melawan mobil-mobil ya menghantam mereka sampai berdarah they just bashed into the students, left their clothes, their shoes, scattered over the road. There was pools of blood in the middle of the road. Indonesian intelligence officers threw buckets of sand from the beach over the road, over the blood on the road, and the students ran across and, and dipped their hands in the blood and the sand. They were very angry that, that this was being covered over so quickly. One of the students threw a T-shirt over the fence and it was saturated with blood and he said, take that to your country, tell your country what you've just seen. The newspaper said many were hurt and one was actually could have been killed. Many of us have relatives back in Timor, especially in Dil. Dil is not a big city. And that is the reason why it took us there, because we wanted them to, to, to find out what happened to those three students that were badly hurt. We have been protested for 14 years and not, not once has it come out on the television. And now you want to cover it up. You are now in Indonesia. Yes. This is Indonesia. You are now technically trespassing. We were waiting for the consulate. It was agreed that they would see us. And we had an appointment, so we would wait and see him. And the police says, oh, no, you can't. You're trespassing. So now we're going to take you by force. He said, oh, look, we are going to stay here. You do whatever you have to do, but we are staying here. About 30 East Timorese students and supporters went to the Indonesian consulate in Sydney today yeah, to present three letters we're to be part I said that uh, on behalf of our community and uh, the young Timorese people living in Australia, in Sydney, we want to hand this letter to the general consulate in order for him to deliver to the Indonesian government in Jakarta as our formal protest in regards of the uh, mistreatment of uh, East Timorese uh, 
students in, in Dili. But the Consul General refused to see them and instead called in the police to remove the students from the premises. Our reason being there was just a peaceful demonstration. It was just a symbolic sit-in in regards to the people of East Timor that were just shot during a peace, also a peaceful demonstration. Actually, the police started grabbing people and uh, pushing people and uh, brutally taking people to the car. As a direct consequence of the student demonstration during Ambassador Monjo's visit three weeks earlier, General Benny Madani went to East Timor to address a meeting of senior East Timorese officials. At great personal risk, a secret audio recording was made of his speech. Mark Baker, a journalist for the Australian newspaper The Age, was in Dili one week later and through an anonymous contact was able to obtain a copy of the recording. Apa yang tertulis dengan itu ada di sini di sana, sama sanana, namanya Fredilin, atau orangnya berada di sini, entah di PPR, entah di Pemda, entah di mana. Pemisahan tim-tim dari wilayah Indonesia lain akan dihadapi dengan tekas. Indonesia and Australia have been negotiating seabed boundaries and exploration rights in the Timor Sea since the early 1970s. The Timor Gap, known to have oil potential, is that area of the Timor Sea between Australia and East Timor. Here we go. Flying over the Timor Sea, the foreign ministers of Australia and Indonesia, Gareth Evans and Ali Alatas, signed the Timor Gap Oil Treaty in December 1989. The treaty was later ratified by the Australian Parliament, with few dissenting voices from Australian politicians. I think an interest in the resources of the Timor Gap and uh, a desire to exploit those resources has been a determinant of Australia's policy on East Timor since 1975. I think that with the signing, we have provided a practical, but at the same time, quite a comprehensive and innovative framework for cooperative relations between Indonesia and Australia. Indonesia has only been able to sign the treaty with Australia because its sole rights to the area in the Timor Gap are a result of its illegal annexation of East Timor in 1975. We don't accept that Indonesia has the right to negotiate uh, resources of uh, East Timor that belong to the East Timorese people. The treaty violates one of the most fundamental elements of international law which is listed in many resolutions and the UN Charter, namely that territorial acquisition of force is never recognised as being lawful. Well, Portugal has stated even before and the treaty was signed and approved that uh, we consider the treaty is uh, illegal in terms of the international law. Any treaty that Australia wishes to enter into with regards to the Timor Gap should be between Australia and Portugal as the official administering authority or else between Australia and an independent East Timor. Australia, um país independente, que nada tem a ver com o Timor-Leste. Indonesia, em Goa, está a exercer uma administração de facto em Timor-Leste, que também nada tem a ver com o Timor-Leste. Timor-Leste é uma pátria invadida e ocupada. Many people claimed that East Timor would not be viable economically as an independent state. 
yet we see that many of the same people who voiced these sorts of opinions back in 75 are the same ones who are now um, congratulating Australia on gaining access to such potential wealth. I think if you think back over the whole period, the other agreements, the relationship we've had has been very significant, very important, but this is really unique and uniquely important. And uh, for that reason, it's really quite an historic occasion that we're now witnessing today. In uh, signing the treaty, Australia has effectively tied its hands. It's working so closely with Indonesia in such um, a concrete, substantial way that it's lost any independence and has effectively disqualified itself from playing any meaningful role in trying to resolve the conflict in East Timor. <laughs> As the administering power of East Timor, Portugal is the only country which can challenge the legality of the Timor Gap Oil Treaty. In early 1991, Portugal began legal action at the United Nations International Court of Justice. However, as Indonesia is not a signatory to the court, Portugal can only take action against Australia. This challenge by Portugal is the most significant test of the United Nations principles in recognising the rights of the East Timorese people. If people are really genuinely wanting to sort out the East Timor problem, they do have to go back. And it's not asking too much, because Portugal has a duty. There's an ongoing running saw there, in fact the beginnings of an intifada, and in response to the resistance in the streets of Delhi, we're seeing the beginnings yet again of another cycle of repression by Indonesia. So what, what are we going to do? Stand back and let it run for another generation? Small things happening in Indonesia, for instance, uh, you make a lot of noise about it. But uh, things happen bigger than that happening here in Australia. We thought, well, that is their problem. Why should we interfere in their problem? The people who are talking about East Timor uh, not the Australian government, they're, uh, as I say, the Japanese um, Prime Minister, the US Congress, um, and really it's silence on all fronts in this country. O facto de nós resistirmos há 15 anos e ainda gritarmos hoje que vamos vencer, que queremos vencer, e que estamos determinados a vencer, porque o nosso povo assim o exige, a nossa pátria também assim o pede. And it was the bridge of international peace and order. This council has the responsibility to find ways in order to put an end to armed aggression. Many proposals by Fretiland to enter into negotiations for a peaceful solution for East Timor have been made in the past. This information has been independently conferred by Australian intelligence During his officials. historic 1990 radio interview, Shanana reiterated that the National East Timorese resistance is prepared to negotiate a solution without preconditions except for a ceasefire under the auspices of the United Nations. I think it would be a very good time for the East Timor issue to be reactivated at the United Nations as the issue of annexation by force and the issue of oil, both of which are inherent in the Timor Gap, have come to international attention. Of giving effect to the principles of the United Nations Charter. The Prime Minister's pledge last Friday to support the US Gulf initiative today became reality. Australia has important interests in the Gulf, but also it's important for Australia that the world understands the big countries cannot invade small neighbours and get away with it. Everyone is talking about Kuwait, everyone is helping Kuwait and everyone is shocked that a, a, a large country like Iraq invaded Kuwait. What about us? Indonesia was also a large country, 180 million people. 
invaded a country less than 700,000 and, and one third of our population has already been killed. O povo, praticamente o povo que está no mato quer a sua independência. E a independência acho que é, deve ser dada, porque a Indonésia não, Timor não é da Indonésia. A Indonésia não tem nada com que entrar em, em Timor. Durante o tinha tinha que ser no ano que Fritilin era o fundo. Nem tem uma força do povo, nem a Fritilin, o Fritilin é o povo de Timor, mas o fundo é sobre militares indonésios. Nem era o fundo, nem era o Belhuto, enquanto a Indonésia é o Timor. O povo de Timor, Fritilin é a força do povo. Nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo. A Indonésia também é uma base de aldeia para o povo. Nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo. Nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo. Nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo, nem era o fundo. I am a rua, I am a ida, for to send a lack of viewers, must barrack the poor, I have been guns, Laco, Indonesia, Link, Indonesia, the force of both, it is about who to the poor Laco, Funu Tomate, Link, Hele, Emma, Ida, they must Funu ne continua. Suffocate my culture, in the culture of your culture, smother my revolts. The point of your bayonet. The point of the bayonet is carve the trail of your progress. In the point of my bayonet is carve the history and the form of my liberation. Thank you.